I think at its core, Ad Badger really aims to be the tool that wants to build really, really good PPC software to make PPC optimization easier, faster. And those are our grand intentions. You know, our grand intention is not to build a gigantic Amazon tool. It's to really ask ourselves constantly, strategy first, what is the strategy we're trying to accomplish? And then what is the tool that we need to deploy? This is the e-commerce brain trust, a podcast about building momentum online for established consumer brands. Join our hosts and their expert guests for high level conversations about e-commerce strategies, trends, and innovations. Access our brain trust and boost your brand's e-commerce potential. Welcome back to the e-commerce brain trust podcast. I'm your host, Kiri Masters, and I'm really thrilled to be joined today by a guest and a friend of mine, Michael Erickson from Ad Badger. Welcome to the show. What a privilege to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. We've been friends for a few years now, both in the Amazon space, you for, well, 10 plus years actually in PPC in all different shapes and formats. Google, Facebook, Amazon ads recently. And Mm -hmm. it's been very cool because we've we've both run agencies. You run Search Scientist, which is a paid search agency that does Amazon ads as well as Google and Facebook and works with different industries besides e-commerce and myself with Bobsled, where we do operations, advertising, marketing, and brand protection just for Amazon. So we've been on sort of parallel tracks for for a while now. But you recently did something way more exciting, which is launch a software product called Ad Badger, which is a PPC automation tool for Amazon. How is all that going? You know, when you decide to, I guess, be an entrepreneur, <laughs> it's like good to go down that path when you're an entrepreneur, this is what you sign up for. It's going to be tough. It has been really cool to see all of the ups and downs and challenges and new problems to solve. I think for me, like that's the thing that is like most exciting to me about business on like this journey of sort of entrepreneurship of building companies and all these things. It's like, we have these incredible puzzle to solve. And like, I love to sort of, it's like the scene in the hangover where Zach Galifianakis is like at the blackjack table and all the math is swirling around him. Like that's how I think of business. And I think like tapping into the software world after using PPC tools for years, it's kind of like that. It's like all these new problems to solve, all these new challenges. And that is a really glass half full way of describing, yeah, software development. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun so far, but I know that is only half the story. <laughs> Right. It's definitely been fun like to start a second company, you know, the first one, like very serious, very, very like got to be buttoned up, got to be very serious, you know? And then with Ad Badger, it's like, let's have a lot more fun. Like, mm. let's have a cool mascot. Why not? Like, let's adopt like this honey badger personality. Like, yeah, let's have a little bit more fun this time around. And then, you know, that sort of spills over to the agency too. And now that's behaving better too. And like, so there's definitely been some cool network effect with. Mm having a software company with hundreds of users as opposed to an agency with, you know, do- like dozens mm. of customers. Mm. Very interesting. So since we're friends, you have a direct line into me, but I've got to tell you every week I'm getting about five pitches from different PPC, Amazon PPC automation software companies. Right. Me too. Sometimes, sometimes I'll get an email. Oh, really? <laughs> that must be fascinating. Yeah. This is like, It seems Mm -hmm. to be escalating as well. So initially it was a pitch every once in a while, then it was a pitch a week, and then everyone wants me to demo their Amazon PPC tool. Why is this happening? Mm -hmm. You know, when when I first had the idea of an Amazon PPC tool, this was like early 2017, and there's nothing. There was no one. And uh, I was like, why isn't anyone doing this? Yeah. There was, there was like, it was barren. And mm. then slowly, but surely it has become, did you, did you see Mad Max Fury Road? No. <laughs> it's pretty good. 
<laughs> but picture in, for people that have seen it, that's basically what it's like. And for you, Kiri, who hasn't seen it, I will say that it is like a post apocalyptic scene in the desert where everyone's driving these post apocalyptic cars that are like duct taped together and have like skulls uh-huh. on them. Ours has a badger on it. And then it's like we're all racing to get like the last gallon of water or something like that. And it definitely has this sort of like fast pace feel to it. And I think that's pretty interesting. I haven't seen the movie, but you definitely painted a picture for me in my head. So, (laughs) but you didn't answer my question. Why are there so many tools now? What I think is so interesting, like if you think of the Google ads space or Facebook ads space, I actually heard this described in a really unique way, like part of the reason why Mark Zuckerberg was able to create Facebook in his dorm room, but it's because all of this infrastructure was there that wasn't there, you know, 10 years before he wanted to do that. Or mm. Essentially, it's very easy to sign up with AWS and have a server, you know, it, finding a developer isn't impossible now, mm. learning to be a developer isn't impossible now. So the barrier to entry, I mean, this is right. This is like the general trend of technology. So if you look at Google ads, like 20 years old, you can sort of see that when it started, like you had to pick up the phone and call Google to place a keyword bid. Then over time, the platform matured and APIs are rolling out. But even, you know, we're talking 15 years ago, developing software is very different 15 years ago than developing it today. So that's part of the reason. So Amazon's having its advertising boon now, whereas in the days of Google ads or even Facebook ads, they're sort of peak excitement, right? Like most people aren't super pumped about Google ads tools the same way they are going bonkers over Amazon ads tools. Because it's new. Right. It's, it's newer. And because it's, it's newer today, like it's being new today is different than being new five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Being new now means that the opportunity is abundant. The resources are all over the place for you to grab and tap into. So that's sort of part of the, the acceleration of like technology. The fact that Amazon advertising is having this boon, it's sort of like, and hang on tight because I'm going to go on this, this big tangent. Not only is the software becoming easier to find developers, like you don't need to be a coder anymore in order to build software. You, you know, you can find developers rel- relatively easier, easily. They're in high demand. I live in Austin. I can throw a rock and probably hit a developer from where I'm sitting. So you have that component of like it being 2019. And then you have the component of years ago of, hey, Do you want to be an Amazon seller? Do you want to like all of this, like sell the dream type marketing? It was almost like a ticking time bomb going off to eventually have like a PPC tool explosion where it was like, use this tool to find your new product. And this product will unleash. We're talking tens of thousands of people going into the Amazon selling space you know, it, Amazon itself has become like money ball. It's become like a video game. It's become a, a way to, you could have no interest in selling a tissue box holder, but lo and behold, if you discover with all these different tools that are out there, that a tissue box holder is a fantastic product to get made and then sell, you will go and do that. And if you're very tools driven, just like Amazon is, you know, it's it's so much data driven. So you had this Technology and at this explosion in technology, this explosion in people moving towards Amazon and individual sellers flocking towards Amazon. And then you had Amazon coming to popularity in terms of the advertising, all coming together. Welcome to 2019. Everyone's friend has a Amazon tool, PPC tool. Yeah, that's definitely what it feels like. There's such a groundswell around Amazon in general. Like it's what people want to talk about. It's changing the face of retail. It's changing the face of entrepreneurship as well. And so there's people out there, some enterprising people who are selling stuff on Amazon and participating in the gold rush that way. And then we've got people like yourself who are actually selling the the pickaxes in the gold rush. I think what you were about to ask me is what makes Ad Badger unique. Like why do this? And I think a thing that like 
I have been optimizing Amazon ad campaigns for, I think it's like six or seven years at this point. Like, and I was doing it manually for so long. And I think me building ad badger, if nothing else, I wish ad badger to be known as like the artisan's tool, like the technician's tool, like the tool that was created by the PPC optimizer, who's been optimizing campaigns for seven years. So I think as we sort of like lay the groundwork out there, there are so many tools today, but I'm curious just because it's like hot opportunity now, how many will be there to last? Like how many people actually want to build PPC tools? Like how many people actually really, really enjoy the nuts and bolts of PPC optimization? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so not to say that like opportunistic type companies are inherently bad or less than something else, but if anything, like I legitimately like enjoy optimizing PPC campaigns. So ultimately I wanted to build a tool that, opti that optimized PPC campaigns in adherence to the best practices mm. of PPC optimization. Yeah. That's why I'm here. Your intentions are pure. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about what is different about Ad Badger to other PPC automation tools. Cause everyone's got their own shtick. There's companies out there that have two dozen data scientists with MBAs and, you know, there's different approaches that people are taking to PPC automation. What is special about Ad Badger or what approach are you taking? Right. For PPC optimizers, by PPC optimizers, it's true and true. The core thesis for Ad Badger is what moves would you make if you were sitting behind your keyboard 24 hours a day? What would you do if you were able to watch your data roll in minute by minute? And then in adherence to the best practices of PPC optimization. And I think like starting with that very core essence that a lot of times you might see tools that try to do everything, you know, manage inventory, manage reviews, like manage every single element, and then also tack on a PPC tool. I even wonder sometimes, you know, I think it's hard to find anyone that uses the exact same tool. Cause now there's tools that can do Google ads, Facebook ads, and Amazon ads all in one. If there's someone out there that uses that one tool for all of their platforms, I would like love to talk to that person. Cause I actually don't think those people exist. I think lots of times you want, it's like the classic bundling versus unbundling of tools. You know, there's, if you manage your website, you can use Zoho to do everything. You know, it's got its own Slack replacement. You don't even have to use it a separate tool for team chat. You can use Zoho chat and Zoho email and Zoho CRM and Zoho. I even think they maybe have websites. And what I believe most people do is they want the best in breed for that particular thing that they're doing. So, you know, you do use Slack as opposed to a bundled thing that also does email marketing and all these different things. I think at its core, Ad Badger really aims to be the tool that wants to build really, really good PPC software to make PPC optimization easier, faster. And those are our grand intentions. You know, our grand intention is not to build a gigantic Amazon tool. It's to really ask ourselves constantly strategy first. What is the strategy we're trying to accomplish? And then what is the tool that we need to deploy? Yeah. So do one thing or a collection of small things really well, not try and be all things to all people. That's right. So when brand, I'm going to say brands primarily, even though this will apply to agencies and consultants as well, but when you're selecting an Amazon PPC tool, what kind of metrics should you be looking at to measure how worthwhile it is? Are you thinking about the time you save, whether your campaigns are more efficient? How do you even measure like if your campaigns are more efficient before and after? How do you suggest people think about the ROI of using a tool like this or any PPC tool really? So I think that's a fair question to ask, but I also think because Amazon advertising is changing so much, I actually think the team 
behind it is actually on like how you can communicate with them and how you talk to them and what their development roadmap and their aspirations are is way more important than, oh, I turned this tool on and in 24 hours did this thing because without a doubt, Amazon is going to change something pretty darn soon where whatever that thing is, it's probably going to be out of date. So we always like invite people to get to know us and like our passion about Amazon advertising and, and being on top of things, those kinds of things, who's building it, why are they building it? What is the goal of the company building the tool? I actually think those things are like secretly way more important than anything that it does today. Because without a doubt, it's going to be obsolete in six months. So really being focused on Hey, here's our roadmap. This is, we try to publish every little, t every update on our features roadmap to let people know, like, this is an update. Now you can do bid optimization on auto targets. You know, now there, it used to be just one bid for your auto campaign and your sponsored products. Now there's four, like, let's jump on that. Let's communicate how we're going to jump on that. Let's actually talk to users about how they'd like to see it. Let's take a data driven look into this. So I think. Part of what I mentioned earlier about software being different today than it was even five, 10 years ago is that companies should be having conversations with their users like that. And customers should expect that type of conversation from software providers that they work with because things are moving really, really fast. And, and maybe it's not necessarily true. Maybe it should be true. I mean, I think the general trend with software is that the demands of what customers expect is going up. Like there's so much competition, customers went out. So, you know, whether it be your email marketing or marketing automation tool or Slack or whatever it might be, customers have demands on that. And I think one thing that really separates good software companies from bad is just how much they listen to customers and how much they communicate with customers. So get to know the team building the tool. I think that's probably the most important part of this entire experience. And of course, performance needs to be there too. I actually think improved performance is almost table stakes. Of, of course, a tool should be improving your performance, no doubt. That's what I was going to say is that that all sounds nice and it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. But if I'm an e-commerce director at a mid-sized company, I still have to go to my boss and say, we need some budget for this. And so how do, like from a dollars and cents standpoint, what kind of outcome do brands do your users get from using ad badger and what are they going to get out out of that is it time is it better campaigns is it less spend over like what kind of metrics should you be looking at with, on your scorecard right all the above in the sense of like if you had to encapsulate it in one sentence you know hit your target kpi with a lot less man hours. Mm -hmm. So whatever a person's or whatever a company's kpi is maybe they want to straddle break even a costs maybe they want to hit a 15% or 10% a costs maybe they want to work on scaling campaigns whatever it might be different people are going to have different demands the first way to really evaluate it is time savings so how time savings and efficiency so in terms of downloading a search term report looking through the search term report in excel combining multiple months of search term reports because search term reports are only 60 days. But what about stray keywords that end up costing you $10 a month that skip by a 60 day search term report? You want to know what that yearly performance is. So allocating or, or uh, c connecting multiple search term reports that's a cumbersome manual process. Looking at these search term reports, finding new negatives, this is an automated task, meaning if you can write it down, you shouldn't be doing it again. So if you can write down, look for search terms with over a certain amount of clicks without a conversion, turn this into a negative exact keyword at the ad group level or the campaign level, something like that. That's not a task a human is better at than a machine. So having that time savings, whether it be negative keyword management, finding new negatives, finding new positive keywords, so finding new targets to go after more aggressively, finding terms that are to the left and right of that term to find new keyword ideas, as well as determining what your perfect bid should be based off your goals as a way to look at multiple data points. So look at your expected 
revenue per click by looking at conversion rates from 7, 14, 28, 60, 90 days worth of data, weighing those numbers, determining what your bid should be based off its current conversion rate and what it thinks the next conversion rate can be. To be able to do that at scale would take a human perhaps more hours than there are in a single day. A machine can do that while you're out at lunch. So I think in terms of time savings, without a doubt, there's meaningful time savings to be had there. And then from the performance side, now all of a sudden you're doing things that a human couldn't do or, or isn't doing much faster and more efficiently. So whether the company's goal is to you know, improve revenue, get better margins, whatever their KPI is, having all those things automated and moving quickly, being able to sift through large data sets very rapidly, being able to weigh things that would just take you too long to create in Excel. These are the types of things that AdBadger helps with. Good summary. So let's talk about man versus machine for a second as well. And do you think that what is the place of humans in an increasingly sort of in a world where software is increasingly better at doing those tasks? If I were to turn this question around to you, if you could only eat chocolate for the rest of your life or only eat peanut butter for the rest of your life, the good news is you don't have to pick. You can combine these two and have a Reese's cup in the same way that you don't have to pick between only doing things manually and only letting the machines take over. The best and most optimal way to manage a PPC campaign is not human only, is not machine only. It is definitely a fusion and a, a union of the two. So being able to know what a human does best and being able to know what a machine does best, that I think is the pay traffic professional's job today in 2019 and moving forward. So knowing how to spend their time and there, I think there are certain tasks that are indisputable that the PPC professional should let a machine do. So I think the easiest classic example of this, like I mentioned, is search term management. You know, show me search terms that should probably be added as a negative keyword. You know, we know what threshold in our heads we want to add as a negative keyword. You know, maybe it's over 30 clicks without a conversion. Maybe it's over 35 in spend without a conversion. Maybe it's 5,000 impressions, really bad click-through rate, and no conversions. So we sort of have these thresholds in our mind of safeguards of as soon as a search term crosses over here, we want to get rid of it. We want to block it from triggering our campaigns anymore. And we will also want to look at long periods of data too, as opposed to just the 60-day timeframe that Amazon spits out. So the manual process might be you log in once a week, maybe it's once every other week, you download one search term report, you look at probably just one 60-day range, when in actuality, you should probably be looking at longer timeframes. But you know, 60 days is probably enough, or maybe you download 120 days and then you combine those two spreadsheets. And then you tack on a filter, then you look at the terms and then you add them and you have to go into the first campaign or the first ad group to the second one. Maybe you'd create a bulk file that's its own task too. So you're doing all these things manually, maybe once a week, maybe that's a two hour a week or three hour a week task for a sizable account, a machine, can do exactly that. You can program it to do exactly the way that you want it and have it run every single day. So if you were to do that, you've just saved three hours a week if you did it once a week, or you saved 15 hours a week if you were to do that every day. So not only do you get time savings, you get better performance. And then with that free time, that can be used for additional competitor keyword research. That could be used for novel keyword research. That could be used for so many different things that are higher level that machines just cannot do yet and perhaps may never be able to do better than a human. Excellent. Good answer. Well, this has been really great. I've, I am interested in following this, this space and you're obviously putting so much of your past experience and talking with lots of customers and figuring out like, you said how to adapt to whatever crazy new feature or change Amazon throws at us next. It's a game of it's a game of of catching up with them. So this has been really great. I would like to mention again your agency search scientist, which does paid traffic, Ad Badger, which is ready to go, adbadger.com. And then you also have a really great podcast and podcast about Amazon PPC called the PPC Den. 
Yes, I got it right. <laughs> that is correct. And yeah, we did a lot of research on this to verify this claim, but we were the first Amazon advertising dedicated oh. podcast. Every episode, Amazon advertising, wow. week in, week out. There you go. That is a good claim to fame. Well, thank you again for coming on the show and we'll link up to all those places in the show notes. And do you have a tagline that you usually sign off your podcast with? Because I haven't come up with one for mine yet. What do you say? Yes. I'll see you inside the Badger Den. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Well, I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. And I wanted to let you know about a new project I'm working on, which is my second book. I'm actually co-authoring a book this time with one of my friends and media experts, Mark Power from Podian. And we're co-authoring a book called Amazon for CMOs. And it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. This is Amazon Strategies and insights for senior level retail executives. What we've done is distill our experience of working with brands, both small and very, very large Fortune 500 brands into a book for executives to get a sense of what's going on within Amazon. What can we learn about their leadership principles and the way that they make decisions? What are their frameworks for deciding what to work on? how to prioritize things. We've also talked with a dozen CMOs and retail executives from CPG brands to get their take on what makes a successful Amazon channel, what they've done within their brands, where Amazon fits within their organization, how do they innovate? So we've really tried to take a voice of the industry as well as our experience working with these brands as consultants. So this book is going to launch in early September. And if you'd like to learn more about book and be on the mailing list for when this first launches, so you can get it for free when it first launches on Amazon, go to Amazon for CMOs. Dot com. That's Amazon for CMOs.com. Dot